Sorry, my brothers. I must stay strong to defend my motherland from colonizers. <laughs> I was going for an African accent there, then it suddenly turned into a Russian accent. I don't know, Russian African accent? Who knows? There's Russian Africans, right? I don't know. Anyway, whew. sorry, I'm a little, a little winded. Hopefully my nipples aren't showing on the, the screen there so I don't get demonetized. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm basically an iceberg in real life. If you haven't seen me, I'm a basically a giant iceberg. I, I can sink the Titanic. That's how big I am. Okay, sorry. Let me catch my breath here and let's get right into the video. Ethiopia, this one doesn't need an introduction. The only African country that hasn't been colonized. Let's find out more about it. As soon as I churn it up a bit and put on my headphones. Okay, here we go. Hey everybody, say hi to Samri. She is a real Ethiopian. Hi awesome. everyone. Samri, are you ready to make Ethiopia proud? So ready. Let's do it. That's my bird ass. Make Ethiopia proud. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie and we have right, reached Ethiopia. This is a big one, okay? Ethiopia is like one of the big shots of Africa. Yeah. You won't find any place like this anywhere else on Earth. No, it. you will not. There's so much to cover in so little time, so let's get started. Except in like Eritrea, I bet. Okay, so you guys know uh -oh, how much I love fired. administrative <laughs> subdivisions. I felt like I was a kid in a candy store when I was doing the China episode. That being said, with Ethiopia, it's like we just won the golden ticket to the chocolate factory. Let's dive in. As it borders six other countries, Ethiopia can't is dive the in. world's most locked. populous landlocked sovereign state located in the Horn of Africa. Prior to 1996, the country used to have 13 provinces, but then after a bunch of internal drama and conflict, they redrew the lines, and now Ethiopia is divided into nine ethnic-based regions, each with their own autonomy and extended legislative power under the constitution. Technically, under Article 39, they each reserve the right to secede from Ethiopia if they desire. However, it's a little debatable as to how much this clause actually applies to them. The capital. Yeah, so the, if he's if he's saying the east, he's referring to the Ogadiv Plateau. This is where like mostly ethnic Somalis live, and they actually fought a war against each other over this territory. Uh, Somalia lost after a while, and then just in, a lot of internal chaos happened. Started happening in Somalia. Somaliland wants to split. Uh, there was a civil war. There's Somali pirates. It's a very, I should say, very capital poor place. It's one of the poorest places in the world now. And it was all over this. Yes, a barren wasteland from the looks of it. Again, that's probably not true. From looking at it, there's only like a couple of green spots. And they went to war over this against a pretty powerful country with Soviet support. So pretty powerful African country with Soviet support. I don't know how much that was a good idea. That's what happens when you lose wars. Like I keep saying on this channel, don't lose wars. Addis Ababa, which translates to new flower, lies in the central heart of the country and acts as its own separate entity apart from any region, as does the second largest city, Diradawa. These are what you call charter cities. They bypass the regional level and govern themselves independently, only okay. under the Ethiopian constitution. Which is strange because Harari is considered a region, even though area-wise it's smaller than the charter cities and has the smallest population as well at only around 212,000 people. Which is even stranger because the ethnic regions are further divided into zones which are further divided into waredas and some of these my god <laughs> to be affiliated with a certain region that they lie in and have decided to go rogue they're called special waredas and have a second tiered level of autonomy and there are 10 of them half of which lie in the southern special nations waredas. nationalities and people's region more Sometimes like possible as ethnic the SN uh, and PR. You know, which brings us tensions. to that place as the third most populous region this aptly named area of ethiopia has more tribes and people groups than anywhere else most regions have less than 10 main people groups that my god how do you fit that disc there? this place has about 45 and i think that's about it with uh administrative divisions oh wait land disputes ah yeah okay uh here we go there's a lemmy triangle all the way in the south by kenya and sudan then there's the ogaden dispute i like how she was she was very uh enthusiastic to get into the uh, uh freaking uh, land disputes but he wasn't so enthusiastic there it is the ogaden not the ogadev ogaden <laughs> sorry ogadev i i am an a, a, an african russian aren't i <laughs> with somalia and finally technically there's that jabal al Tair island dispute with eritrea and yemen in the red sea even though yemen kind of took it over but then that volcano exploded and destroyed okay, half of mind. everything <laughs> look it up guys i'm on a time crunch uh oh very quickly the largest airports are of course the capital addis ababa bole international Dredewa, and magale in the north one thing that definitely makes ethiopia stick out though would have to be the fact that they are the only african country to successfully avoid ever being colonized by any european outside forces like the italians does. tried but then they held their ground and fought back relentlessly I forgot about libya no and libya tried too yeah. oh yeah but they're not european that's yeah. true this Why? is unexpectedly Why libya? <laughs> unprecedented but in return kind of gave them a little respect yeah ethiopia held their ground right there isn't a single place that 
that embodies the entire soul of Ethiopia, but rather the country is speckled with unique sites that each tell their own distinct piece of the Ethiopian story. They have more UNESCO heritage sites than any other country in Africa. Gunfire round, just to name a few notable spots. The Harara Hyena Town, where you can feed wild hyenas. The mysterious Why would you get close to that? stone carvings. The Bete Gorgis of Vanilla Viking Church, hewn rooms. out of single rock. The Chapel of the Tablet, where it's believed to hold the incredible ancient Ark of the Covenant. Guarded by virgins who cannot leave the building. The Obelisk of Aksum from the ancient Aksum Kingdom. I've seen that before, but uh, <laughs> really, the Tablet Ark of the Covenant. To hold the incredible uh, you might want, might not want to open that, or your face is going to melt. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ancient Somebody? Ark of the Covenant. Guarded by virgins who cannot leave the building. The Obelisk of Aksum from the ancient Aksum suck. Kingdom. The indigenous Being a virgin tribal and villages of Omovali. The, the and the famous castle of Gondor. Yeah, and we Gondor? haven't even mentioned what the landscape oh. looks like yet. <laughs> this is where the real adventure begins. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> I'm assuming there's polar bears, Ethiopia's right? land is shrouded with extremes yeah. on so many levels, and to really get a good look at it, you kind of have to understand the tectonic makeup. Like mentioned in the Eritrea episode, yeah, yeah. the Horn of Africa is located apart. on the tri-point convergence of the Arabian, African, and Somali plates, and Ethiopia is caught right in the middle of all of it. The Somali plate isn't so much of a plate, but rather a crack that didn't finish cracking, and today grinds across the African plate horizontally in what is called cracking. a transform motion. This essentially splits the country into two portions, the Western and Eastern Ethiopian Highlands, also known as the Ethiopian Plateau, and the Mar Mountain. The Ethiopian Highlands are the largest continuous mountain range in Africa, which stretch north to south and comprise a great diversity of terrain depending on the region. Climate wise, it basically goes like this. The east is hot and the west is cool. Oh, huh, that's simple. As mentioned before, the northeast cool. corner by the border of Eritrea contains the Danakil Depression, where you find Dolor, Acidic. the hottest human settlement on Earth, with average annual temperatures holding around 41 degrees Celsius. That's probably all sulfur, by the way. Most of this hauntingly beautiful area is uninhabitable, with some areas fuming with toxic gases coming from the boiling geothermal salt ponds. Nonetheless, Why people you still come close? here to mine for salt on a regular basis. Oh, and if you're lucky, you can witness blue lava flowing from some of the minor volcanoes Dude, that in the area. Blue middle. lava. Yeah, That's blue. Wow, blue. I didn't even mm -hmm. know that existed. Close by, you can also find Er <laughs> the most active volcano in Ethiopia, with two lava lakes continuously shining orange, Metal sometimes again. referred to as the gates of hell. Nope, I have the real one, and mine's better. Head inland, and we hit the breathtaking Simeon Mountains, where the tallest peak, Rash Desene, is found. Here you can find Lake Tana, the largest lake in Ethiopia, and the source of the Blue Nile, which makes up a little loop de loop and then flows northward. Okay, so here's one controversy that uh, you guys probably heard about in the news. With the whole uh, Egypt and uh, Ethiopia going at each other was basically Ethiopia wanted to build or are building a large dam on the Blue Nile t for obvious reasons for electricity. It will provide electricity for a lot of people. Obviously, Egypt is not happy about this because the Blue Nile supplies around 80% of the water of the Nile. And as we know, uh, water is water is a very important resource, especially in Egypt. Uh, being that uh, they, you know, feed their crops off of it and whatnot. So if the dam blocks up the water, there's going to be a lot less water for Egypt. And a lot of it uh, evaporates before it even gets to, like, Egypt. So if they would actually do that, they would, uh, it would be bad for Egypt. Very good for Ethiopia and not that good for Egypt. And Egypt has even uh, threatened to, like, bomb them or something, like, bomb the freaking uh, dam. So, but I, I think that construction is uh, currently still uh, underway and uh, it should be complete. So I don't know what Egypt's going to do about it, but hey, time Into the White Nile in Sudan. Head more south and the landscape suddenly becomes dramatically more lush and green with the highest concentration of vegetation in the country. The west and south are home to the largest portions of agricultural plots where various grains, vegetables, and spices and herbs are grown, including once again, teff, the national grain of Ethiopia, which is used to make the same injera bread I talked about in the Eritrea video. And this is what it looks like and it's so good all right crew come on over all right lunch break we're eating right now lunch break come on yes, yes if you've never had ethiopian food you're missing out on life the land is also teeming i don't know no ethiopian shops animals like Bosnia. gazelles <laughs> antelope kudu cheetahs ibex baboons and a hotbed for right. over 500 species of birds that either inhabit or migrate through the plateaus year round however the national animal is the lion it was even put on the former flag of ethiopia when it was under the last emperor which has a pretty interesting hey, story yes, behind it, which we will cover in Hi, Liz, the last year, you read? <laughs> okay, let's just dispel the myth already. When you hear the word Ethiopia, everyone still kind of thinks of this. And yes, during the conflict during years, the wars, there was more yeah. prevalent. Yeah, However, cool. mainstream Ethiopia is nothing like that. Mm, no. No. One thing you have to understand is that Ethiopia not only has ancient history, Except the but runners. prehistoric history. They're pretty yes. skinny. Yes, as in like some of the oldest specimens Marathon of runners. modern day humans have been found in Ethiopia. Yeah, labeling it as one of the origin regions of human emergence. Remember Lucy? Oh. Yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact, it was assumed that uh, the uh, proto um, 
man, I guess you can call it, uh, one of the uh, homo uh, species, one of the first homo species, right? was actually a tree-dwelling uh, hominid, I guess you can say, or a primate that was yeah, in the trees of Ethiopia, like in the savannas of Ethiopia. Uh, yeah, and that's where the oldest fossils were found. Yeah, Lucy, they just mentioned it. Ethiopia, first of all. Now, Ethiopia is incredibly diverse like with two, over three million 80 years. different ethnic groups and tribes living in the country. Old. However, a few of them stand out and dominate the rest. About a third of the population is Oromo and about 30% are Amara. At less than 10% each are other groups like Somali, Tigraya. This is one of their uh, main languages, Amharic. Sidama and the rest are huge conglomerations of over it looks like their uh, the, the Amharic language looks like it's written in unknown language I'm talking about the Pokemon unknown just look it up and and uh, compare it and you'll see what I'm talking 70 about 70 different people groups as mentioned in the Eritrea That's video usually Ethiopia a good thing. is unique that along with Eritrea they have an Abisha population in a nutshell Abishas are Africans that have Semitic roots down the line to their ancestry as they inhabited the ancient land of Kush as the story goes Ethiopians claim that they are descendants of the historical King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba who gets a quick shout out in the Bible long story short she had a son from Solomon named Menelik who became the first emperor of Ethiopia DNA tests have shown that most Abisha identified individuals have partial genetic markers and traces that come from the same same ones that are typically found in Jews and Arabs. This is partially the reason why Abisha people look a little different from the rest of what most presume a sub-Saharan African individual is portrayed at. Oh, and they love their That's better right teeth than most uh, oh. yes, they people the I know here in Bosnia. unique <laughs> designs in the world that can't be found anywhere else, and they just flash their natural follicles. Um, Amharic women kind of even like have Arabic. a fascinating hair whipping dance that looks like this. Ow, my neck. That's also metal as fuck, by the way. <laughs> Nonetheless, that is only the Abisha of Ethiopia. Yeah, once again, there are over 80 ethnic groups that are radically different from the others. Oh, and once again, just like Eritrea, the Amharic peoples also use the only indigenous African script, the Fidel, or the Fidel? Fidel. Fidel. Fidel, Fidel or Giz alpha syllable read. Oh, that's Otherwise, the thing. Otherwise, almost all the other people Maybe it's not Amharic. Ethiopia write with a Latin-based script like Oromo and Somali. Speaking of which, the Oromo, which are slightly the largest group, speak a Cushitic-based language closer to Somali and Afar, which is completely unintelligible to Amharic. The country has ties to all three Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. About 63% are Christians, mostly Ethiopian Orthodox and Protestant. Muslims make up about a third, and the rest are either Jew and other indigenous faith. Yeah, you heard that right. Jews. Ethiopia is home to one of the only black Jewish populations. There's a dispute that the Lemba of South Africa are also black Jews, but that's another story. Back when it was the Kingdom of Aksum, Ethiopia became Man, one of the first Ethiopians nations to accept weird. Christianity. <laughs> and as cool. tradition oh, holds, Jesus' disciple Matthew traveled there to share the gospel, and Philip the Evangelist baptized the first Ethiopian. The Harari region of Ethiopia is also regarded as the fourth holiest site in Islam, as it has 82 mosques and over 100 shrines. But one thing, Samri, that really sticks out would have to be the Ethiopian calendar, right? Yeah. That's so Pretty weird. Unique. Yeah. The Ethiopian calendar is about seven years and three months behind the standard Gregorian calendar that most other nations follow. As of right now in 2016, the year is 2008 in Ethiopia. Really? It's yeah. like 2008 in Ethiopia right now. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> Very similar to the Coptic one, the calendar uses 12 months with 30 days each and a 13th epigominal month. Like, is that Amharic or is that like the G's or G's, man? I mean, that's really G's because G's. It, it would take you a while to learn that. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe there's not that many symbols as I think of, but uh, is that the arm? Well, there's an exclamation point, so... I don't know, I keep thinking this is the Amharic one. Maybe it isn't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm into languages, but uh, when it comes to African languages, uh, I'm, I'm pretty clueless. <laughs> month made up of either five or six days depending on the year. New Year's Day typically lands on September 11th or the 12th depending on the year. Throughout most of their history, nice. Ethiopia was under kingdoms and empires, the last one ending with Emperor Haile Selassie. However, his son Haile Selassie. Kind of ruled technically for like one year until the communist Derg community came in and then they ended the monarchy. Side note, this is where the tension with Eritrea pretty much started. The Derg was deposed and now they operate under a federal parliamentary republic. Fun side note, Emperor Haile Selassie is still to this day revered by Rastafarians as their messiah, even though he was quoted for saying, I am not God. Samri, I'm just curious, like, what do you eat? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I can't believe the Rastafarianism like, uh, if you don't know, the Jamaican hat, the colors of the Jamaican hat were inspired by the, obviously, the Ethiopian flag. So, how did they make a religion out of that? How? It's, it's beyond me. I mean, they have good music, but besides that, uh, how did how did that happen? Ethiopians think about the so whole Rastafarian questions. thing and Haile Selassie and all that stuff. What do they think about it? They think they're pretty cool. I mean, they love our country, and they have a portion of land there, and so they provide to our con economy. Yeah, you can imagine how they felt when he actually visited the country in the 60s. Speaking of outside relations... 
guessing has to do something with the Africa, is African kind of a big uh, shot. They've earned their background. prestige in the world stage, and now they have Jamaica, a lot of Ethiopia. people to connect with. No surprise, the U.S. and China are the biggest overseas investors in Ethiopia. The U.S. gives the most aid and has military them alliances, <laughs> and China is the largest importer. They have both relations with Israel and Palestine. After Israel became a state, thousands of Ethiopians flocked over, and today there are more Ethiopian black Jews living in Israel than in Ethiopia. Palestine is also recognized as a state, and both have their own embassies. Turkey has ties from way back in the Ottoman in Empire times and Russia used to be a really good friend back when the Communist Derg Committee took over for about 20 years. Now things are kind of like eh between them. Their best friends, however, would probably be Egypt, Djibouti, and to a lesser extent, Egypt? maybe Sudan. Egypt shares an ancient history with Ethiopia for thousands of years, Anymore. and the Nile Basin plays a major role in their cooperation. Djibouti is kind of like their only way out to the Red Sea, and business between them is crucial for Ethiopia's trade sector. Sudan is kind of like a major oil provider and gateway to the Mediterranean for them, despite the border conflict. They still have relatively relatively good relationships. In conclusion, Ethiopia is kind of like a big deal. I mean, some of the earliest peoples ever recorded came from here, let alone communities and civilizations. They avoided European colonization and have a unique, vibrant, diverse background found nowhere else. And yet somehow them. they're able to hold on to every region together and become one proud people of rich heritage. Yeah. What do you think, Sammy? Was that was that accurate? Was that? Yes. <laughs> Thank Perfect. you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Stay tuned. After nearly two years of doing geography now, we finally go back to Oceania and Fiji is coming up next okay but before we get to fiji oh that, that one's good i need to go to fiji like just take a break from all this <laughs> i know ugh, this is hard work man this, is, this youtube thing is so freaking hard okay anyway uh i should probably put a shirt on i'm super white or and i i tried to get a tan but it's been like cloudy for like I would say even 40 days now at least. It's, it's, it's that crazy. It's like a month I haven't seen the sun. We haven't seen the sun yet. Oh, man. Okay, anyway, let's just finish it off. Hey, Geography Peeps. Welcome back to Flag Friday. Today's episode is going to be a heavy one because we're going to discuss Ethiopia, which has a lot of symbolism and a lot of backstory behind it. First of all, small minor mistake I made in the episode. This is actually not the president of Ethiopia, Mulate Teshome. It's actually the former prime minister, Haile Mariam Dessalen. Sorry, I googled the image and then it just popped up for some reason. I don't know. I assumed it was right, but it wasn't. And I'm not that great on Ethiopian politics. I'm sorry. It was my fault, my fault, my fault. All right, that being said, without further yeah, ado... Cool. Don't be too hard on yourself, Paul. Okay, there is so much to cover with Ethiopia because they have gone through so many transitions nice in just the past half century alone. Okay, so first of all, the flag is a horizontal tricolor of green, yellow, and red, and uh, historically these colors have been used ever since about the 13th century with the Solomonic Dynasty. The green represents the hope for the future as well as the land's fertility. The yellow represents peace and harmony between the various ethnic go. and religious groups that inhabit Roll the country. Credits. And the red stands for strength. And... Okay, these get cheesier every time. And creepier. Yeah, I didn't need to sleep at all. Yeah, that no was comment. a great animation, wasn't it? Yeah, that was actually made by our favorite Irishman, Potter. Thank you, Potter, for sending that. Potter is still on like his cross-global journey, and I think he sent that to me from a hotel in Kazakhstan. I think he's camping in the middle of some desert in the Himalayas, and last I checked, he grew this sweet beard, and he shook hands with a cardboard cutout of Obama for some yeah, reason. Thanks, enough. Potter. You rock. And speaking of long-term world travel, this episode is brought to you by one of the best resources I I on information Tibet. on travel, audible.com. Okay, let me just... Skip that. Let's just skip it. Skip. All right, there we go. Here at Geography Now, you are really appreciated. Love you guys. Thanks a lot. Now, just like other flags, Wish Ethiopia I can contains run away the emblem, to Tibet, not the coat of arms, back. but an emblem on its flag. The emblem is a yellow pentagram star on a blue circular shield. The blue represents peace. The star stands for diversity and unity, and the rays of light represent prosperity. Now, let's talk about historical symbolism. This flag Fair is actually enough. kind of relatively recent, as it was adopted in 1996. Prior to that, they actually had a transitional period. And then prior to that, they had a democratic republic that didn't really administer the regions very well. 
and then prior to that they had the communist derg and then prior to that they had the empire these were the three former emblems used during the transitional period the democratic republic period and the communist derg period as you can see there was derg. a common theme <laughs> of using labor and industrial images to portray the hard-working people group alongside with wreaths and cultural symbols one important note to take is that the tricolors are actually the primary source of the pan-africanist movement which influenced a ton of other african states to follow along and do the same color scheme of green yellow and red on their flags many african states saw ethiopia as inspirational for having successfully fought against so many outside forces for so long which brings us to that very short period of time during 1936. italy was the closest outside force that came to colonizing ethiopia even though the occupation only lasted five years and it was never short of conflict from the inside during the brief italian occupation they designated four governments each with a coat of arms under the italian empire right as world war ii erupted into full-blown warfare it's debatable whether or not you can actually call this brief period of time an italian colony but most people around the world would call it at best an unsuccessful occupation that didn't last that long which brings us to the ethiopian empire as mentioned in the ethiopia episode ethiopia was part of the ethiopian empires and kingdoms that spanned millennia in the past the flag of the emperor One used of the, the lion of countries. judah in the center with the same color configuration in the last years the lion lost its crown and the cross <laughs> staff was changed into a spear until the communist derg came in and deposed the empire in 1974 during that time they also had a coat of arms which Dear. looked pretty intense it had lions angels swords halos a throne and a star of david with a royal orb with a cross tons of of geese writing and curtains and of course today rastafarians still use the lion of judah flag as a symbol for their religion and they still believe Halle selassie is like a deity so that's about it ethiopia has gone through a war zone of symbolic transitions but in emperor. the end the green yellow and red will always wave proudly in the air this has been flag friday if you've just been flagged stay cool stay tuned okay i'm gonna go put a shirt on and we'll get to the next episode asap so until then take care